The wheels have landed for the Lamborghini. These have been over probably six months in development. They're a one of one, doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, and Strom have done an amazing job. Finally, I get to see them in the flesh. These are completely one-offs for this car, and yeah, I'm excited to see it. Okay, do the honors. What is up guys, welcome to another update on our 2JZ Drift Lamborghini Gallardo build. We're here, Josiah has come all the way from Canada and brought a very special box because in this video, we're gonna to attempt to fit a knuckle kit to get more angle out of the Lamborghini. We tried to 3D scan and do all this, but we needed the brains from FDF to come here and do it. We're then gonna put the wheels that we've one of one made from Strom on the car and hopefully have this thing back on the ground by the end of the video. Things are moving very fast because we've got a deadline of two weeks or three weeks to get this car done. So we can't mess around. So Josiah, do your thing. And it's, oh, these always take so long to open. Well, you know what? You only have yourself to blame here. <laughs> So essentially what you've done here, you've 3D scanned the car, you haven't seen the car before, this is the angle kit, this is just gonna go into the car easily. This will not go into the car easily, but this will increase the angle. So yeah, we had you guys 3D scan this car, send me the scans. In a week, we were able to design this kit, it bolts onto the back side of the wheel bearing. The reason that this couldn't bolt onto the front is because Lamborghinis have huge brakes that are radial mounted to the knuckle. It makes it really difficult to add an angle kit. So this was as simple as it looks, oftentimes the simplest part products are the hardest to make. So this is all that you have. And then we have fully built tie rods that actually are the same parts that we use on a lot of other kits. This one specifically would have been used on a FC RX-7 and a Supra. We are putting RX-7 and Supra tie rods on a Lamborghini. Correct. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. I mean, yeah. this build has just taken us in all directions. This is gonna be your lock kit. Plus, we have some adjustable Ackerman here because this car had very poor Ackerman. Uh, the lead wheel just chattered, you said, at lock, and it gets, you know, this was an all-wheel drive car built for racing, so it was meant to do everything but what we're trying to do with it. We've been noticing that over the last few weeks, that this car does not want to do what we want to do. However, what I love about this is that it's a one-of-one -one kit. There's never been an angle kit for a Lamborghini Gallardo before. No. So we don't know what it's gonna do. Also, before you think this is gonna get 90 degrees wise fab lock, that's impossible with this car because unless we were to move the wheel out to about here, we don't have the clearance. So we're gonna try and balance clearance, wheel size, and Josiah's techniques, brains, and machining to make as much lock as we can get from it. Hopefully that's more than it had because it had nothing. To be exact, this is gonna be a 40% improvement over what it was. <laughs> It's somewhat good to mention now, if this hub doesn't work, then we just True. cut up a Lamborghini hub. They're handy, God. <laughs> you just go out to the local motor factories, walk in and just say, hey, just if you have them on the shelf, uh, two front hubs there for a Lamborghini Gallardo, and then they fall over laughing, and then you realize they're probably about two and a half, three grand for a hub. Sometimes there's pressure on something will fit. This is a lot of pressure, Josiah. He's confident, he's confident. <laughs> Yeah, so this was the old tie rod block. It was on the knuckle like this. So we chopped that off to make clearance for our adapter. The adapter is gonna bolt on like this. So we just have to do some cutting here, kind of cut a C out of it so that this will sit flat against the back side of the knuckle. And then that's gonna be our new angle kit. It's like a hub adapter. Exactly, yeah. And it's gonna give us a shorter ratio, which will give us more steering angle. Nice. It's like a CNC machine. You are the machine. <laughs> yeah, so we're just gonna throw this bracket on now that we've cut the knuckle away. So we're gonna that. sit there like this. We didn't have the, the bearing off the knuckle in the scan, so the fact that these lined up was kind of a guess. Really? You, you just like we could see the heads of yeah. the bolts, but we had to like, Kind of educate, we guess it. I think it's safe to say that if I made try to make this with looking at all the holes with the car, I couldn't make something that accurate. Take a look at this. This will explain it without being too complicated. So if we slap this on where it was, our pivot point is right here, and our new pivot point is here. 
Yes. So we've increased the, or we've shortened the ratio, giving us more steering angle, but not a lot more. We could have made this here, but we didn't want to give you too much because of how little clearance you have. Yeah. The problem is if the rack only moves a little bit and you get a lot of lock, you now lose control. So you want to make it short enough, but not too short. This is the fans and that is the footwell. So there's nowhere to cut. Everything is the chassis and it's all structural. So it's not like just an extra piece of steel. Oh yeah. You cut that, that's the actual chassis of the car, the structural part of it. And there's not a lot of structure in the car. So we have to kind of compromise, which again, remember, this is why people don't use Lamborghini Gallardos as drift cars because they're not set up for that. But we're doing the best with what we can and this looks fantastic. Look at that. We have an angle kit. Oh look, my God. Look. If you put a bicycle wheel on it, you'll be able to get 90 degrees. What's it hitting on the other side? Sway bar. But that's probably going to be gonna a good, get that much up. Probably going to be a good bump stop for you. Okay, so the kit's all on the car, bolted up, and because we don't have the wheels that we're gonna be actually running on the car, it's gonna be quite hard to show how much angle this is actually going to get. Well, I did test drift this car, and this is the maximum angle you had on the car, which is about, and I'm not exaggerating, one degree of angle, because it's terrible. And so as you can see on this side, that's full range. It's not great. It's, I, like, it was hard to park the car, never mind even drift the car. It just needs like 14 point turns because it's before we'll drive. So this was my most worried part of the whole project because I didn't believe we'd actually get much angle out of it. And now I'm going to assume, because I like being surprised. That's how much angle you get now. Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. So here we go. Jesus, that is a big difference. Oh, that's loads. Compared to what we had, that's very controllable. Because even doing a donut in this car was difficult. I was gonna say, you may not spin it as much now. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. And I need all the help I can get. You know what was interesting? The ball joint on the Lamborghini is mounted like the wrong way. So you only could turn so far. Yeah. It really needed to be mounted this way. Because it was actually hitting itself. Yes, yeah, so you can see the boots torn from it pinching itself here, going like that. So it was, there's nothing you could have done at all. Even if you added a spacer, did whatever you wanted, never would have been able to get more angle unless you did exactly what we just did. Tell all of your Gallardo customers that we now have an option. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have, if you guys have a Gallardo, look at the off the shelf option now from FDF. All you gotta do is cut your hub straight in half, put on the kit, it's already designed. We did all the research for you. It works great. Now we have still got problems. The wheels are coming soon, but um, we'll see how much clearance we have because that's another worry. But uh, I'm not gonna say that I've already redesigned the wheels before they've got here, but I have already redesigned the wheels. I'm worried about this, but yeah, we're in uncharted territory, but that's the point of this whole build. And that's why FDF do what they do is that, of course you can just copy and paste other people's work and sell it. But you guys create it knowing the knowledge straight off. And this is as much of a challenge as you're gonna get as a car that definitely doesn't want to be a drift car to try and make it have lock. Now we gotta do the same on the other side. Then we're gonna get a like whole swing through. So this is from no measurements and no line, both sides of the car. Josiah, you have some onboard laser. Calipers built into my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredibly close. All right, so this is a massive step for the car. This man has envisioned something in a different continent, brought it with him without ever doing one of these cars before, and we now have a fully working angle kit on the front of a Lamborghini Gallardo. I would imagine the first ever. And 
Now we have one problem down, because Josiah can solve all that. The second was engineered by me, which is the wheel specs, which are <laughs> going to be a one of one from Strom Wheels, which are going to be very special. And we got to put our BC coilovers in there. And if all of that goes together and we still have lock at the end of that, we're winning. But I'm sure we're still, I wouldn't put the angle grinder away just yet. But thank you so much. That's a dirty hand, but a well-earned dirty hand for getting all of that. Wow, I'm just so pumped. This was the bit I was most worried about. And now I can see the finish line with this car. So let's go back to HQ. And hopefully by the end of this video, we'll get a little teaser of what it's going to look like in the end. All right, guys, we've jumped back to the Drift Games HQ because the wheels have landed for the Lamborghini. These have been over probably six months in development. They're a one of one. Doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And Strom have done an amazing job, I think, because I haven't seen them yet. This is honestly, you've seen them, Josh. You've seen them. I haven't seen them. I purposely like being surprised because I've seen them in 3D scans. I've three, seen a little bit of the manufacturing, but finally I get to see them in the flesh. These are completely one-offs for this car. And yeah, I'm excited to see them. Great, do the honors. Oh. Okay, so, sorry, I got distracted. These are, uh, they're interesting, and I'll tell you why they're interesting. So, I originally said the wheels we designed, the three pieces from Strom for the Supra were like, perfect, really nice wheel. We'll do them in different offsets for the Lamborghini. Then they argued with me that we need to do something more wild for this car. And I said, hey, if we're going wild, I'm gonna have stories and two different wheels front and back. And they said, do whatever you want. And this is what I came up with. So, what you're looking at here is the Lamborghini Gallardo wheel but reimagined. So the original Lamborghini wheel on this, for example, would be this part, but we inverted it to make it have the holes here for the front. And on the back, this is sort of the Lamborghini wheel, but it is in a concave deep dish. So basically the Lamborghini wheel is kind of not dull, but it's like, it's a nice wheel, but this is like two different versions of that wheel. So this wheel is a completely one-off design, which is like an inverted. I wanted to go sort of an aero disc style on the front. I thought it would look really cool, but with a couple of details. And then on the back, deep dish concave, wide wheel. And I think they absolutely nailed it. These have a satin black center with a gloss black lip, which I think looks absolutely excellent. And you know what else, Josh, have you noticed? We got a one-on-one center cap. So these are aluminum. These are machined out. That's not like... Yep cheap plastic it ones that's like yeah, it's not a sticker so this is our strom and drift games collaboration with the new drift games logo uh, and this is a forged wheel so when people might question this is a forged three-piece wheel so this is not a cast wheel this is a completely one-off so for this car i think again wheels on the ground you never know until you put them on a car but looking at the fit finish everything on these it's absolutely exceptional super happy with these that's a big wheel on the back isn't it <laughs> Jesus. Are you sure what size they are? These are 20s. So this is a 20 by 12 and a half on the back. And then these on the front are narrow because angle kit problems, as you've already noticed in the video, we can't cut the body. So we have to make the wheel a little narrower. So just to give you a bit of reference here, quite different from the front to the back. Was it the guy that she tells you about versus the guy what you worry about? Yeah, so these, <laughs> these are the front wheels. So this is a 225, 35, 20. So a very low profile, very small wheel. The reason for this is that clearance is going to be a problem with the angle kit. If it was just a Liberty Walk show car, we wouldn't need to go to this. We could put a much deeper wheel on it. But because we need angle and we need lock for what it's going to do, not what it's going to look like, we wanted to get a good balance between looks and functionality. On the back, it didn't matter. just went as wide as I could and make them look as cool as I could. And I think they look absolutely spectacular. So the big question is now, how do they fit on the car? We know this is going to fit. We know the back wheel is going to fit. <laughs> the front is the, the front one that's in is question. The one. We've taken an educated guess because let's be honest, there's not many people with Lamborghini Gallardos you can just hit up on the internet and go, hey lad, I'm putting an angle <laughs> kit, an FDF one of one angle kit on one of one wheels on a one of one Lamborghini with a 2J. Any advice? You're not going to get any. So we're doing a little bit of a shot in the dark here, but I can't wait to see it sit on these with the kit. That's what I really yeah. want to see. That's the bit where this whole project's going to come together very fast is the wheels and the kit. I, I suppose we really get like, it's great or we're in real trouble. That's pretty <laughs> much all that's going to happen here. We're either going to be like, oh, this went fine or uh-oh, massive uh-oh. Yeah. Stay tuned for more idiots building cars they really don't know what they're doing with. 
But you're enjoying it, I guess. Really good stuff, guys. Really good stuff. Okay, so we're back down here at AAA Customs to fit the freshly painted kit, which, as you can see, is a satin black, which kind of gives a little bit of the look away. But obviously, there's big graphic schemes go on top of that. But most of all, the angle kit's been fitted, and we need to put on the custom. We don't actually have a name for these, but we're just calling the custom Lamborghini wheels for now, because we need to figure out if there's going to be any arch clearance problems with the extra lock and the new wheels. So there's a bit of figuring out to do there. David and Craig have been busy, as you can see. The calipers are now no longer yellow, and the arch is. Sealed. So we said this in the last video about what we're going to do about this and we had an idea and it looks like it's worked. Yeah, no, I think it's worked, yeah. It's um, it's obviously not the prettiest looking thing in the world, which is kind of frustrating a bit, but we got this stuff, I can't even remember the name, but we got, got it in from Germany. Nazi heels and cars over there and all, so there's fairly good reviews on it. I think all the options that we looked at, I don't think there was a clean option to do, but as you can tell, this is very, very sticky. Durable. Durable is the word. <laughs> There'll be no smoke getting through that anyway. Fingers crossed anyways. Right, the lads are eagerly getting the stuff together. Here's the front bumper and I guess we're just going to throw this on as quick as possible because we want and you want to see the wheels as soon as possible, I'm sure. So basically these are a, this is what I want to run. So these are a 20 by nine ET20, I think, on the front. And then what I've also had strong makeup, not that I'm panicked in any way, shape or form, I've also got to make me a 19 by eight minus 40. So they're kind of the same. But the problem is that the eight will be really small wheel. Like that's Ford Fiesta stuff on the front of this where I much prefer to run this. So once we get this on, we'll know where we're at with fitment. We'll know where we're at with clearance and by the looks of it, we might even be able to get away with a spacer or something, a bit of camber to make it work. I would love to run the 20s, but we're going to find out now when Dave puts it on and drops the car, if I'm talking hoop. So the wheels are... I think there's hope. I think there's hope because I think we might be able to push these out a little bit more. And they do clear the brakes, which is also a worry because of the design we're going with. I mean, it's just, who are we asking here? Nobody knows anything. You base this on absolute pure look. That's kind of how all the builds are done though. Just give it a go and someone will have more engineering knowledge than me to get me out of that trouble. Unfortunately, you were the engineer in this problem. I only had one responsibility and that's why I'm worried the back wheels look mega. Like yeah, I've been there, I think the back wheels are fairly stancy. You, you might be part of the camber gang, yeah? So we've got to put the other wheels on the other side and drop it down and do the steering side to side. She's very big wheel in a very small car. Basically, I'd say if you ran over a coin, you'd know what value it is in that, that tire. <laughs> oh, that looks savage. I didn't know how I whispered, but that, it was like a moment, a moment of oh. awe. It worked. It looks unbelievable. It's actually back to being a car again. Jesus, it's like. That is unreal. <laughs> Why has everyone just gone silent here? Because it's like a moment. A magical moment. It's a magical moment for all involved. Right, David, do the... Um, do lock, lock. Uh, the, the worst thing is, right, we should be here appreciating that the fact that the wheels and kit are on, and we're so impressed with that. No, all, we're, all I'm we're thinking all, about. We're all terrified whether the front wheel is clear or not, right. and it probably won't. Here we go. Yeah. It's not a great start. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so that yeah that that's how much luck we have oh, we've gone backwards <laughs> we've literally gone backwards we're literally yeah we're in the situation that we're scared of looks cool 
can't, can't can't steer anywhere. We can change the caster by moving everything over to the right. He said, but then it's getting very close to the to the intercoolers on the front bumper. I am not sure there's any way this is working. Sledge, <laughs> giant sledge. We're going backwards. All right, we're gonna to have to figure this out. We are in trouble, as we thought we would be with the front wheels. So we got a space caster chop cut weld we don't know but uh we're gonna have to figure it out because this is why people don't make drift cars at a lamborghini <laughs>